Hello, and welcome to the Curriculum Development Process Professional Learning Series. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the Curriculum Development Process and its role in creating a local high-quality standards-aligned curriculum. My name is Misty Higgins, and I'm joined by Fox DeMoise, and we are Professional Learning Coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. Because document names and key terms will repeat throughout the curriculum development process professional learning series, for ease of communication, we may use the acronyms on this slide throughout the videos. Take just a minute to review the acronyms on this slide. Please note that in the videos, we will say CAS for Kentucky Academic Standards. In the first part of this video, we want to build some background context for the curriculum development process by focusing on the KBE board resolution from July 2020 regarding student equity, the importance of creating curricular coherence at the local level to help improve student outcomes, and the role of the model curriculum framework in supporting districts and schools in creating coherence and equitable learning environments for all students. To address student equity in July of 2020, the Kentucky Board of Education passed a resolution affirming its commitment to equity in Kentucky public schools. And that resolution states that every student in the Commonwealth deserves equitable access to effective educators who have unique experiences and perspectives, quality preparation, and are committed to the success of all learners. Based on this resolution, we then need to consider what are the deliberate actions that we as educators need to take to ensure equitable access to learning for each and every student across the state. Well, it starts with local school and district implementation of the Kentucky Academic Standards and then providing teachers and students with access to local high quality standards line curriculum and instructional resources that are designed to help students meet the grade level expectations within the CAS. In the research from Michael Fullen, Fred Newman, and several others, creating curricular coherence is consistently identified as one of the most important initiatives for improving student outcomes at the school and district level. Curricular coherence is about aligning the standards, curriculum, instructional resources, assessment, instructional practices, and professional learning within and across grade levels to create equitable learning environments for both students and teachers. And in order to create this level of coherence, it starts with aligning the standards, curriculum, and instructional resources at the district and the school level. Now, one of the main resources available from the Kentucky Department of Education to support districts and schools in creating curricular coherence is the model curriculum framework. The MCF is outlined in Kentucky law and is designed to provide guidance to districts and schools in the areas of curriculum development, selection of instructional resources, as well as assessment and instructional strategies. When you look at the table of contents from the entire MCF, you can see all the key areas addressed within this document play a critical role in creating curricular coherence. Um, there are three sections that specifically support taking that first step in coherence with developing a local curriculum aligned to the CAS and selecting high quality instructional resources to support implementation. Those include the introduction to the MCF, which differentiates the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources as defined in Kentucky law. The curriculum development process, which outlines a possible process districts can use to develop their curriculum and select their primary HQIR. And then Appendix A, which contains a toolkit of sample district artifacts and other resources to support implementation of the curriculum development process at the local level. Now that you have a little more background context around the importance of the CDP, we're going to move into our next section that will focus on how to access the model curriculum framework and the curriculum development process, how the CDP is organized, its structure, content, and supports, and resources for professional learning around the CDP. To access the MCF, go to kystandards.org and on the homepage, click on your standards resources. On the next page, under General Resources, click on the icon for Model Curriculum Framework. That will take you to a page where you can access the MCF. The first icon allows you to download the entire MCF. Below that, you can access each individual section, the curriculum development process, professional learning communities, balanced assessment, and evidence-based instructional practices. 
The introduction to the MCF begins each phase of the four sections. The first step in creating curricular coherence is to develop a local high quality curriculum built around an instructional vision for teaching and learning in the content area and anchored in a primary high quality instructional resource. The CDP section of the model curriculum framework provides districts with a possible process for this work. This process should be undertaken by a curricular team back at your district because creating curricular coherence is systems level work to help ensure equitable access and opportunities for all students. And it is designed to be replicated with each content area as they come up for review in your local curriculum cycle. There are four phases to the CDP and they are meant to be completed in order so the learning and work from one phase can fully inform the next. Phase one is about preparing for the process, thinking about the budget, timeline, and other logistics to help streamline the work and make it more manageable. In phase two, the curriculum team you form engages in analysis of the standards and current research on teaching and learning in the specific content area of focus, matching that to an inventory of local needs. As a result of this analysis, the team works to articulate their instructional vision of what they want the, the student experience to be in the content area across all classrooms in the school or district. The instructional vision then drives the work of phase three as the team selects a primary HQIR and develops the local curriculum anchored in that HQIR. Phase four focuses on implementing and monitoring the curriculum to make necessary adjustments in support of continuous improvement. The icon for this phase illustrates this is a cycle that repeats each year of implementation as the district strives to get closer and closer to actualizing the instructional vision in all classrooms across the district. For each phase of the process in the CDP, there is a section of text that addresses the purpose and brief description of the steps within each phase, key questions for the team to consider as they work through the steps of each phase, and key tools to support the work with links for easy access. On the slide, you can see an example of the layout and format from phase one, step two. To further support implementation of the CDP at the local level, the KDE has created professional learning modules to assist districts in better understanding each phase of the process and curated sample artifacts and videos from districts across the state. As we close out this introduction to the CDP, we would like for you to think about your current process for developing a local curriculum and selecting high quality instructional resources aligned to the Kentucky Academic Standards. What are some similarities and differences you notice between this process and the one currently used in your district? Please pause this video and then resume after the closing reflection. Thank you for viewing this overview of the curriculum development process. If you have any questions, please feel free to email either Misty or me. To build on this learning experience, proceed to CDP Professional Learning Module 1.